Please consider supporting Black Women United YEG for the protection and advancement of black women and girls in Alberta. You can learn more about them at bwunited.ca. Uh, they are always looking for donations and volunteers. So please, again, support Black Women United YEG for the protection and advancement of black women and girls in Alberta. Again, that website is bwunited.ca. Hi, this is Mark Lee Morrison from the podcast Low Profile. I live in Olympia, Washington with my wife and two daughters, and I support Vishkana's creative control on Patreon because I appreciate his journalistic integrity. Vish talks with a lot of artists I care about, and he never asks any boring questions. I love hearing his interviews, and as a Patreon supporter, I get to hear even more of them. If you enjoy creative control too, I implore you to join me as a sustaining contributor. To make your flexible monthly donation to Creative Control, please visit patreon.com slash creative control today. Jesse Lanza is a very talented musician and songwriter currently based in the state of California. Originally from Hamilton, Ontario, Lanza is a Polaris Music Prize nominated artist whose latest album is both danceable and catchy and also very introspective and questioning of herself and the people she's surrounded by. The record is called All the Time and it was released on July 24th, 2020 by the Hyperdub imprint. And it prompted Jesse to return to this show so we could have a nice chat about California living with your in-laws during the COVID-19 pandemic. Her dear collaborators, Jeremy Greenspan of Junior Boys and Winston Holmes Case, psychology and other people on all the time, and much more. A part of the Entertainment One Network with the support of listeners like you, who follow and subscribe to this podcast and spread the word about it and make flexible monthly donations at patreon.com slash creative control and Massey Hall's concert film series live at masseyhall.com where you can stream dozens of 30-minute films for free, including performances by past podcast guests like Tara Lightfoot. Plus in-kind support from Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planted Bean Coffee in Guelph and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton. This is the 554th episode of Creative Control, featuring the wonderful Jesse Lanza with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Hi, Jesse. How's it going? Uh, I'm great. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Now, I Good. think of you as a Hamilton person, but I'm going to, and so I, I ask this question as I ask of all my guests when I'm talking to them remotely, you know, I always ask, where in the world are you? I feel like I'm going to get a bit of a surprise here. And I just spoiled the surprise. It's like I spoiled my own surprise party just now with this preamble. <laughs> Jesse, where in the world are you right now? Uh, I'm in Silicon Valley. Silicon uh, Valley. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Was that are you surprised? <laughs> I had heard where is where exactly Silicon Valley has become a thing where we think of where all like the Google and the Facebook and the technology Apple maybe I don't know if Apple's even there. Yeah. Is that where you are? Uh, where is it exactly? Is it, I I had heard you were in San Francisco. Yeah, I mean basically I'm like half an hour away from San Francisco, but technically I'm like close to Palo Alto, which is like you know, the Hewlett Packard factories like up the street. Absolutely. <laughs> and all the and all the other places you mentioned as well. Yeah. <laughs> fine company Hewlett Packard. Make a fine <laughs> yeah. fine printers and computers. We should give them a little shout out. Well, I forget Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton. Let's go for Hewlett Packard. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, what brings you uh, to uh, to Silicon Valley uh, today as we're speaking? Well, my partner's family lives here, and so this was the place we thought, like, we're going to stay for the long haul, I guess. They, they would have us here. <laughs> There's a place for us to stay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, just because everything was such a shuffle in March. And, yeah, we, we didn't renew our lease on our apartment in New York because we thought we were going to be on tour. And that obviously isn't happening. So we just had to kind of rush and figure out something really fast. And this was the this was the best option. So. Okay, there's now there's several questions that have come to mind based on what you just said. You mentioned New York, you mentioned a partner, you mentioned in-laws. There's so much going on, Jesse. I know, yes. I I thought you were Hamilton Jesse Lanza. First of all, who is your who is your partner and how are they related to your work as an artist? Winston Case is my partner and he does all my music videos. And he's also been doing all these live streams that I've been doing recently. Like I've been doing a lot of DJ sets where he films them and does like some lights and projections. And that's been my, those have been my shows basically. Do you, um, do you get, so uh, I, I've already asked you some very personal questions. Do you get any, do you get paid, a, do you get paid to do those things or do the, do the companies just say, Oh, we'll give you the platform and that'll be how you get paid. Do you know what I mean? Uh, no, there's, there's no money, but the, the boiler room, uh, was a fundraiser for the oh, okay. NAACP. Great. Yeah, but, awesome. um, yeah. Sorry, I have been talking to lots of, as you know, I talked to lots of musicians. This is a strange time to contemplate our, uh, your livelihoods. I'm not, I'm not involved. <laughs> I, 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 do, I make a podcast ostensibly for free, and then I do other work. I work a day job. But, no, uh, yes, I'm, I'm just trying to get to the heart of it because I've had some very, um, in-depth analytical conversations with musicians about the state of affairs and the fact that, you know, you spend, we're going to talk about your beautiful new record all the time today. And one of my guests recently, Simone Schmidt, was talking about it's so weird. We as musicians spend months, years, you know, tens of thousands of dollars sometimes to make albums. And now these companies, uh, streaming companies or, or social media companies are trying to get us to pivot to make these kind of rickety live streaming videos. You know, they don't look that great. They don't, I mean, you've got Winston. He probably knows what he's doing with the camera by the sounds of it. But, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you've got production value in your thing. I should, let's start with that. Yeah. I mean, you're totally right. Like the whole mandate for Instagram is to like, they, is it for, for it to look bad and sound bad? Like it's, so, yeah. and they frame it as though it's like, Oh, it's going to be real and it's going to be like gritty, you know, what, but that doesn't mean anything. It, it's kind of these, yeah, these corporate like keywords that just mean like, you know, everybody has access to like whatever sort of mandate Instagram has for how they want everybody to use their platform. It doesn't really apply to, you can't make a live stream sound good that way. Yeah. You know? So I, yeah. Um, but I am very lucky that uh, Winston is, has a lot of experience. He knows what he's doing. And yeah, it's, it's a really tough time. Yeah. Out, and, and, and out yeah, there. Yeah, it is. And, and that's what I'm hearing a lot of from people. So I just wanted to get to that because I want you to be doing well. I don't want you to be giving away your stuff to the Instagram or the Facebook. You know, they don't. They're not paying it. I think they are paying some people, yeah. but it's weird. Why didn't they pay them for the records? Why are they paying? It's just normalizing phone culture or something. Uh, yeah, it, it it's, it's a really roundabout weird. It's just like they're stepping around. It's like, well, you could just buy the record. Like, why can't you just do that <laughs> yeah. first thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's been we've we've maybe set ourselves up for this by buying. I don't know. I'm I'm weirdly uh, in a weird spot because I. As you know, I think, well, no, when we've talked, I think we've mostly done interviews in person, to be honest. We've rarely done these kinds of things, but I have done a lot of these kinds of things. So when yeah. when the restrictions started, I felt like I was really ready to go with living a remote virtual life. What about you? Like you are a performer, you tour to make uh, money and you sell records, hopefully. Uh, how are you doing in the grand scheme of things? 
you know, you're, obviously you're living with your in-laws. I don't know if that's good or bad. But, uh, you know, how are you, how are you doing overall with the state of affairs? I'm really fortunate in that my in-laws are lovely and we're in a really nice place where, like, we have space. Like, we have, we're, like, living in the apartment over the garage kind of situation. So, like, we have our own spot. Like, I have a place for my equipment with, like, a door that closes and, like, that's, like, huge <laughs> to just yeah, have. yeah. yeah you know, your, your own room. And so I, I have all of that and we're going to be able to stay here for as long as, as we need to. But yeah, it is this, I'm sure that many of the people you've been talking to have been saying the same thing, that it's like this limbo right now. It's like almost this carrot dangling, like, well, the shows, like maybe they'll come back, but they're not, they're not coming back. (laughs) Well, they're not coming back. Do you think they're coming back? I don't think they're coming back. No, I don't think they're coming back for I mean I think they will come back eventually like this will normalize in time but yeah not at not anytime soon um, unless you're great white did you see that band great white play the show yeah but like what what are they doing like <laughs> <laughs> it's like they don't already have one horrible disaster like plaguing their name that they're just like let's just jump on yeah there's a pandemic to add to like our you know a super spreader event it's i uh, yeah i did see that it's very bizarre and i've I, there's this yeah. whole like freedom and liberty and blah 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 and it's it's very very confusing and uh That's, and i i take no joy in it when i say it's not coming back i know i had a little lilt in my voice a comedic lilt it's sad but i frankly just i don't know about you i'm more concerned about health safety sanity than you know going to see a show i i i'm a, I'm a show going person in in normal times one or twice yeah. once or twice a week i go see a show haven't gone i'm okay i feel all right but you this is different you're you're you miss playing you must miss playing live shows yeah, I, I miss it a lot. And I definitely took for granted the connection, like just that feeling of being there and being able to see people in person and talk to people. And I've just never been like interacting over social media has never been comfortable for me. I don't really mm. do it. Mm-hmm. I don't talk about like how I feel on a day to day basis on the internet. I'm just very uncomfortable with with that and so yeah talking with fans at at shows was like that was the the way to connect really and now that's not there so i'm yeah i'm definitely missing it now you are you're in a situation and by the way i I invoke the phrase in-laws which suggests you're married and did you know i'm is that I'm okay? not married, but I might as well be. You might as you well know, be. Okay. Yeah. I, again, <laughs> yeah. I'm always perilously close to prying, and I don't mean to be. I apologize. But I was just going to follow up on that part, because you sort of talked about how you had your own space. And uh, I don't know if you know this, Jesse. Like, you moved. I didn't know you lived in New York. I didn't know you were in Silicon Valley, necessarily. I had a sense you were in California. Uh, I think of you as a Hamilton person. Did you know that I moved? No. Are you not in Guelph anymore? No, I moved to Edmonton, Alberta. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's huge. It's when bit, did that happen? Well, so we moved uh, basically on just ahead of New Year's Eve. So we were, we got here around around January and uh, immediately within a couple of weeks, there was a massive uh, record shattering deep freeze. Like it was like minus 45 oh. every day for a week. And they were, I was like, what the hell? And everyone here laughed at me and they said, just so you know, this isn't even normal for us. Anyway, then and then like a couple months later, lockdown. So we have been in this, like I said earlier, like training, just like we have been kind of socially isolated and distanced because we didn't really want to go out when it was so cold. I went to a couple of shows. But uh, right. I we were for about five months from January to May. I don't know how many months that is. We were staying in my in-laws basement. And oh, wow. Yeah. And I didn't listen to any hip hop music. I didn't, uh, I wasn't allowed to eat certain foods at my desk. Like it was very, but I mean, all that to say some nice aspects too. They, they engaged with our kids and that was fun. But I felt, right. I felt like I had regressed into some form of childhood. I felt like a 14 year old sneaking pizza. Literally, I snuck a slice of pizza into their house. 
That, that's how bad oh it got. Oh my goodness. Well, it was close. Yeah, to, it was close to dinner time. I'm 42 now, and I was sticking a box of small personal pizza in my jacket to sneak down to the basement to eat it like I was like a rat, you know? And I felt like awful. I'm like, what happened to me? I used to be this autonomous being. You're with your yeah. in-laws, is it? Do you have some meddling, or do you feel like you sound like you have your own space? They're cool? They're chill? They're so nice and really supportive and really enthusiastic <laughs> and actually <laughs> actually um uh stacy like um my my partner's mom and and his sister they they helped us film the face video because we filmed the video for my my single face like right right when we got here basically and like right when the lockdown started and we like didn't have a crew obviously so it was just it was just me Winston and his mom and his sister and they were like holding flashlights and like trying to you know just helping us do the whole thing so yeah I'm um I assume you're out of the basement oh yeah sorry as I'm speaking to you yes and may on may we are in our new home and it's uh to be frank and not to boast in this terrible time and who knows things might go south we have a nicer home. We couldn't afford to live anywhere in Guelph beyond where we were living in a two-bedroom, 1,200-square-foot kind of house, which was better than right. a lot of people were doing. Like, don't get me wrong, but we were like <laughs> two kids, two adults, small home, 18th, or rather, uh, like eight, it was built in like 1872, which it was very charming. Had you ever come to our house? No, you never. Did you ever? No, no, I... No, I, I, we, when we spoke, it was, uh, at the backstage of the kazoo fest. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, the church there. Yeah. 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 Close yeah, to, cl- exactly. cl- relatively close to our house. But anyway, yeah, we, no, we couldn't move within Guelph. Uh, I'm sure. When did you leave Hamilton, by the way? I moved to New York from Hamilton, uh, 2017. Oh, okay. Wow. And so yeah. So I've been living there for a while, but yeah, it's funny. You should say like, you always think of me as like being, Hamilton, because like even though I moved, like I was driving back and forth from oh. New York to Hamilton, like all the time to work with with Jeremy Greenspan on the record, but right. also to like see my family and like I just so much of all the time is like I think inspired by this like feeling of like I was so homesick when I moved and like I just realized how much I don't know, just my because I'm close with my family, like Hamilton is like. I just can't, even if I, when I move, it's like, I can't get away from this like Hamilton feeling. I think hmm. like my, I don't know. It's just, I just feel it. I don't know if it's cause I'm sentimental or I'm like romanticizing it or what it is, but I don't know. No, <laughs> home is, you know, there's a, it's a cliche, right? I think home is where the heart is. There's a lot of truth to that. Like, you know, your home, I miss Guelph to be honest, but we, we just mm-hmm. couldn't, I mean, you moved from Hamilton, which had a, uh, a, a real estate market that was getting difficult to manage, I imagine, because of definitely. Pe- and but I mean, then you moved to where? Uh, did you end up in Brooklyn or Manhattan? Where were you in New York? I was living in in Ridgewood, which is like right on the border of of Brooklyn. Um, it's right. Queens technically, but I was very close to Bushwick. Which was it? Is- was there any? It's not, and that's not affordable. Was it? Was it that affordable in a way? I mean, it was affordable, but. Um, I was living with two other people and it was a tiny apartment and yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't the most comfortable living situation. Just, I mean, I, I don't want to actually, it was very comfortable in that <laughs> I had a door. <laughs> Just a roommate. I, if a roommates are listening right now, it was good. It was fine. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was fine. And I had a room with my equipment in it and that was different than the room I was sleeping in. Oh, so good. that was that was huge. Yeah. Um, but it was just so different from, you know, I had it like really pretty cushy, cushy situation in, in Hamilton. And um, you were living at yeah, home. You I were thought, living at home, right? Uh, I was living. No, not living at home. Oh. I was living on, on my own, but I had my own studio that was like, you know, I could ride my bike to and it was downtown and it was I had a vocal booth and oh. it was quiet and separate and there was more separation, you know? It's like you were describing with your family. It's like, you know, you have your your part like your wife and your your kids and like you're in 
there's only so many rooms to go to and it can yeah. make you feel a bit crazy. It does. Well, I'm, um, I'm calling you yeah. for, we're, we're speaking now from, well, I have an office. Like I had an office before, but it was also the laundry room and it was oh, right, right beside the kitchen and I, <laughs> it was hard. Like, I mean, I did, this is, I have a little office space. The kids have their own rooms right now. Again, I don't mean to be bragging. It's a terrible time. I'm not bragging. It's just the truth. We We were looking for that in Guelph, but we were getting priced out by Toronto people moving in. And yeah. the market was just, it was comparable to Toronto on, on many, like we would get outbid, you know, we, uh, we bid for houses like eight, nine times and we'd get outbid by tens of thousands of dollars. One, we didn't get outbid by a hundred thousand dollars, but someone did. And they were told it was a yeah, Toronto. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and, and I think that's that was crazy. happening in Hamilton too. And so, so we moved, we moved and, yeah. and then everything's been weird, but I also have that, that homesickness and, uh. It, it's strange, and I miss uh, I miss Hamilton. I like Hamilton. Like I miss being so close to Hamilton, to be honest. But uh, anyway, enough about that. I guess we're talking about relocation. What? Why did you leave your cushy situation in Hamilton for New, for New York? First of all, well, I started seeing Winston, and he lived in New York, and so that was like a big push. But um, I also like had never really left. Hamilton like I went and I went to school in, in Montreal for a few years um, uh, but other than that I really hadn't left Hamilton and I thought this would be a really nice opportunity like I, I have this visa to be in the U.S. that I paid thousands of dollars <laughs> to, right. to get you know so I could work and, and live there in the U.S. if I wanted to and so I just thought it was time for a change and I was really hungry for a change too so okay so yeah I just thought I would try something different how are you feeling now I talked to someone in Ontario uh not too long ago and they suggested that in terms of COVID and the pandemic that Hamilton was actually a big hotspot and I didn't know that uh, and I don't know if that's true it's just something someone said to me and then you are in America which is the epicenter yes. for this thing uh, around the world um thoughts Jesse <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean it it kind of like comes back to what we were talking about before well firstly uh I think the numbers in Hamilton are they're I think they're pretty good. I talked to my oh, okay. sister yesterday and she said that like they were, it was okay. Um, that they weren't, there were no new cases oh, okay. good. for a few days and yeah, the things are all right. And here, like in the County that we're in, I think it's like Santa Clara or San Mateo. The, the numbers are, they're pretty good. Um, but yeah, it all comes back to like, uh, space and like, yeah. I'm just in this suburban bubble right now. And so, and I think so many people, there, there is this divide of people who like have the, have space. They're not living on top of one another, and then there is the opposite of that. And so many people in America don't. There's just there's this, yeah. Space is like this comes with this huge cost, and it's it's really sad and frightening. Are you are you in a place where people are wearing? masks and protecting themselves yeah, okay everybody is behaving and like is very considerate and it's just incredible and, and like so yeah i'm just living in this bubble where it's like yeah everybody's wearing a mask they're believe in science um <laughs> they, you know it's, but then yeah you can go somewhere else and enter into a very different bubble not very far away and it is totally Different, so it's just very weird that people are living in these like alternate realities in parallel. Um, you must yeah. have uh, quite a perspective as a Canadian being in America. Like I know America is always in the news. It feels like, and it has been certainly in the last four years. Like just we're mm -hmm. just constantly inundated, and and that maybe says a lot more about me and what I pay attention to. But do you have a kind of um, not a vicarious thrill. You're there. Do you have a kind of objective sense of it's weird that I'm in America right now at this point in history? Like, do you have that as a Canadian, as someone who's not from there and sort of you're, you're kind of an alien there on some level? Like, do you feel that? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, I, I can't I'm I really want to go see my family, but, you know, the the borders yeah. closed. Um Except for, except for British Columbia somehow. We've, I've heard yesterday yeah. that you can go to British Columbia and we're like, what? Why? Apparently exactly. people... 
apparently Americans are saying, no, no, we're just going to Alaska. We just exactly. want to cross the border to go to Alaska, and then they go to BC, which has a relative quite. They did a good job of mitigating things, and I think good fortune <laughs> befell them too. But what the hell? I am so frustrated because I'm in Alberta, which is third in Canada uh, for the virus. Oh, for num- yeah, right. It's bad, and there's like a surge in Edmonton where I'm calling you from, which is bad. And uh, so I'm sorry. Do I sound panicky? I'm not. I'm chill. I'm no. cool. I'm trying to be cool with it. But like as a parent with kids and I'm trying to and also like we have to rely on other people for our well-being. And I don't like other people. Do you do you like other people, Jesse? Uh, I do. <laughs> I do. And that is something that I really worked through on the album on all the time. Yeah. That was like a huge, a huge theme for me because I was in New York and I wanted to be tough. I had this like, I can do this. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a shift in my life. I'm gonna move to New York. Like I'm not gonna be bothered by the fact that like I'm uncomfortable and and homesick and have all this anxiety and like I'm walking around with this constant feeling of like anger and and irritation I tried to like suppress all of that and it really wasn't working and so and a lot of that would be inspired by like just this irritate like why am I mad all the time why am I directing my anger at like people that I don't know and more concerningly with like people that I live with like my partner like like Winston you know and so it's like it's such a fitting question because i was asking myself that all the time like, interesting so i, I yeah. when i process the lyrics and the singing <clears throat> like the things you're saying on this record do seem to be a 180 of what you were just talking about because they seem to me to be very focused on a you a, a single person i can't tell if you're speaking universally but it's a very um I guess it is the word carnal. It it, does, it is a carnal record on some level. Like it's really about connecting with someone. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, absolutely. And and also this fear that I was worried that like like you know in like a film noir like where the twist at the end is like they were the murderer all the whole time. Like are you conf- are you like- confessing to a crime no, right no. now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just want to call that the police. Would be so- uh, no, okay. <laughs> yes, no, just, I do. I know. I, I know what I you mean. Yeah, I have a point. I, <laughs> no, I was just like worried that I was gonna like get to the end of my life, and it's just like, oh, like you were the asshole the whole time. It's like mm. it wasn't other people. It's just like you. Oh, interesting. Were the, were the dick, and like you didn't realize it because you're a narcissist and you're too self-absorbed to have noticed that like it was you that was the problem it's 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 true i i've been saying Uh, for some time with having since i've had kids i have this spiel that i say to people all the time where i realize that the majority of the times i'm angry at my children i'm kind of angry at myself like because they're they're little reflections of me so there's probably (laughs) it's probably true that when you're angry at the people around you in the world you're kind of also at least a little bit if not (laughs) half angry at yourself for being In that situation, (laughs) you're kind of always angry. When you're late for something and you're driving and you're mad at the traffic, you're kind of mad at yourself because you didn't leave on time. You didn't leave on time. It's your responsibility. It's not anyone else's fault, but you don't want to blame yourself because you got (laughs) issues. And so you're saying you kind of discovered this maybe about yourself like the anger because what I when I hear when I read the lyrics, I'm reading the lyrics as we're speaking. Well, no, no, I'm I, I take that back. That was rude. I'm not reading something else while we're talking. No, no. I'm fully engaged in our conversation. But when I've read the lyrics, there, I fixed it. When I've read the lyrics, it does seem very much a devotional record, like a full, full, full bore love song type record. And I wonder if that's the 180 that you're talking about. Yeah, I was just feeling like this. I just felt disconnected. I felt like. I was really isolated. I felt like I couldn't even connect with the person with my with my partner. There was this kind of wall that I was putting up between between us and and yeah, just kind of walking around feeling like it was so hard hmm. to connect with people and all 
there was just this wall of anger and I really not to like get too much like this is like therapy or something or like invariably I, I, invariably that's what this show becomes it's a pseudo psychology it? well it doesn't I don't mean it I, to be I'm sorry go ahead no no it's it's nice to talk about um music in in that way because the record was like that for me I hmm. just worked through a lot of those feelings and it was really the only thing I felt like I could connect to at that time and I worked through a lot of of uh feelings and just feeling like desperate like why why is this feeling of isolation so overpowering why can't I connect with people why do I keep making the same mistakes in relationships over and over again like um and just asking a lot of those questions and the songs kind of turned into these like what's wrong with me sort of so <laughs> you things, you know so you just posed a number of questions in writing these songs and making this record did you come up with the answers you were looking for uh y yeah i mean it's i think the answer was like i think for a long time i was feeling like I'll do this and then and then I'll be done or it's like I'll write this song and everyone will like it and then I'll feel good or like I'll move to New York and I'll feel better and I think the answer that I came to like after I finished the record was just like whether you like it or not it's like it's never really done like you're never having that attitude of like um, I'm gonna do this thing and then I'm gonna be happy it's just that's not real and if you commit to that then you're going to be disappointed and yeah. really the, the reality is that like it's just it's just work like relationships are work uh being happy is work and if you kind of frame it more as curiosity you're gonna just be a lot better off so not to sound too much like a self-help book but well i think i really <laughs> i stopped committing to this idea that like I i'm gonna be done at some point you know which is such a dark thought like it's just that's almost like well, i'm going to be dead or something we're, we're, not to get yeah too we're, no no we're ne <laughs> no no we're never done i i feel like i yeah. we're, we're never done i have these conversations with people because i want to learn about them but i also end up learning a lot about the world and and myself in it so i do think it's yeah. funny you you invoke the phrase curiosity there or the term curiosity there mm -hmm. and i just asked you to respond to your own questions um, because I was, I thought maybe what happened was you had all these questions swimming around in your head, and then maybe the songs were a way of getting to those answers, um, which is maybe that's a really artsy fartsy way of talking. <laughs> but no, no, it's not. I definitely was looking for self awareness, and like I think being able to write the songs and then like read, listen to them, and kind of recognize what I was talking about did help me to to find some answers. Well, you can hear the searching throughout the songs. Like there are questions in almost every song on your album all the time. In Lick in Heaven, yeah. did you notice is asked. Like you, you're asking in face, baby, is it just enough? Tell me, do you want it all? Baby, are you feeling tough? Which maybe that's a self-reflexive thing that you were discussing earlier. Um, there's just uh, so many questions as I think about these songs. And Alexander, would you rather be lonely? That's a huge question. <laughs> so I feel like when I, now that I'm processing what you're saying and thinking about these songs, I feel like maybe the you, which maybe I superficially thought might be someone like Winston, maybe the you is you in a lot of these cases. What do you think? Yeah, I think it, it changes the, and, it changes for me asking myself, like asking, asking people that I've had relationships with in the past and I'm still working through, you know, why that didn't go well, why we broke up, what I did wrong, what I could have done better. Yeah. The, the fight that I just had with Winston, <laughs> you know, <like, laughs> which is a lot of this, like lick in heaven for sure was just like, I, I, we had had this horrible fight and I, you know, went into the next room that's my studio, which was next to our bedroom and was just like, yeah, I just tried to work it out in, in that song. And I was just reflecting on like that moment in our fight where I could have made it better. Yeah. I could have like swallowed my pride, but instead I decided to just go really 
like nuclear with it, you know, just go full, <laughs> hog, just go full hog and like <laughs> see, see how nuts we could, which is like, I, and I see people making that decision all the time, you know, where it's like, you could just, you could just turn around on this one, but a lot of the time we don't. And, um, yeah, I was curious about that. No, like the self-awareness is so evident as as we are having this conversation. I think about lyrics like once I'm spinning, I can't stop spinning. I'm going all the way, which is a great pop hook, by the way. But it's a that's. Oh, thank you. That's a that's about the argument. That's about that's about once I'm going, I'm going. And so yeah. that's good. I feel like you're asserting yourself as much as you're questioning yourself here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that asserting asserting myself is something I have a lot of trouble with. Like, I don't, I want to assert myself. I don't want to be passive, but I don't want to be an asshole. Finding <laughs> <laughs> You sound like a human being. Like, you sound like a, 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 a cognizant, uh, self-conscious human being who's trying to, uh, you know, I always tell my I try to tell my son when he's left a granola bar wrapper on the ground, like, who's going to deal with that granola bar wrapper? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, well, someone else. So every time you wake up in the morning, you're impacting other people. And you have to kind of think of yourself that way, whether it's good or bad. Like, you, you, that's we all get up and go out into the world. I just drove to the grocery store with my, I wore my mask, don't worry. But I, you know, that <laughs> my little, it seemed like I just went there and, you know, rolled around the aisles in my cart and came home, but I was probably in someone's way. I was probably, you know, or I, or I'm so good looking that they, they're thinking about me now. I'm just kidding. That's not right. But I, <laughs> no, I, I just, mean, you never know. <laughs> exactly. Like I'm you just, we all are out there in the world and we're impacting each other, whether we know it or not. So I think your understanding of that, and maybe it's been great that you went from Hamilton to New York with a concentration of people. Sometimes other people teach you about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And the lesson, I'm sorry, the album was really, yeah, just, yeah, I don't know if I like learned some <laughs> lessons or, or what. How, how many kids? You two kids. And how how two. old are they? They're, uh, my son will be, uh, is almost nine and my daughter is uh, five and a half. Right. That's, what? yeah, that's a handful. Um, But I just was thinking like, I think the... Yeah, I think the lesson that I was trying to learn is like just trying to like reframe my real, like the way that I, like what you were describing, like how you impact other people, yeah. how other people impact you, and that it's not. I didn't want to walk around. I, I felt defensive all the time. Like, and I hated that feeling. Like, every time I walked out, like I was on the defense, and I noticed, like, it wasn't just with strangers, it was like with the people that I love, yeah. which is. Yeah. So I think the album helps me to like reframe that dynamic and that like it's not it shouldn't be about like yeah looking out for yourself or like who's going to like do something to hurt like you know people aren't there for you to be afraid of them <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, no it does it totally does if like, that makes sense it does um, you you take uh you take the the knowledge that you get from from coexisting with other people and you bring it to your your own little bubble your own little world and it, it should hopefully helpfully inform how you exist in that bubble i agree yeah. i totally agree yeah we've talked about how deep and sort of introspective these lyrics are you've done the the magical thing where you've written something very substantive but it's packaged in kind of a uh infectious pop style i mentioned the hook on on once i'm spinning i can't stop spinning i'm going all the way which gets in my head all the time um so tell me about the the sound of this record and, and your approach how do you feel you mentioned jeremy greenspan uh, and and you work together uh, is that yeah. that is that the primary uh, collaboration going on on this record yeah absolutely yeah jeremy and i worked really we just work really well together and like i think that we both we both really love experimenting with equipment and like gear and like seeing how many like synth sounds we can like layer on one song. And it's a really fun way to approach songwriting for both of us. Yeah. So yeah. And, and of course he worked on the last two records with me and like, 
yeah, Jeremy is like when you say like I think of you were saying like you think of me as being like a Hamilton person. <laughs> like Jer- Jeremy is such a part of that for me. He is like you know he's just devoted himself to the arts community in Hamilton. He has this amazing studio that he like built from the ground up mm-hmm. there, and mm-hmm. like it's just this hub of. Yeah, people doing music in in Hamilton, and so yeah, working with Jeremy is just feels really right somehow. So, um, so did you want to be like the mar- the sort of marrying the themes, the lyrical themes with the with the music? Did that occur to you, or is this just an organic? You came up with the music, and then you applied these ideas and 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 this uh, phrasing and these song. Uh, you're singing your vocals to musical soundscapes that were already kind of worked out. Yeah, they both, they kind of would happen like in tandem, you know, I, I, Jeremy would send me like an interesting like drum pattern that he really liked, or like I might have a chord progression and like, you know, a a verse and a course that, I mean, it, they really would never come together in the same way every time. It was always, yeah, I, we passed the songs back and forth a lot over, over from like 2017 to like the end of, of 2019. So yeah, it was different every time. Okay. Well, it's yeah. called it's called all the time, which so many people <laughs> I, I think that's weird because we all have so much time in a weird way and time is also weird uh, at the moment, but tempor- yeah, we're totally. in a weird weird temporal place. We have all the time, it seems, uh some of us anyway. Yeah. Uh where can people uh, go to learn more about you and this record. Where would you want to send them, Jesse? If you go to, not to plug a big company, but if you go to my YouTube channel, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, all my all my videos are up there. My website is a great place to go and like listen to my mixes, listen to watch the videos, listen to the past records. Uh, so that's jessielanza dot com. Okay, you can go there. Okay, and my Bandcamp. Bandcamp is a great place to go and explore too because it's all up there as well okay i don't mean to end this abruptly but i know we both have appointments to get to so uh, yes i'm sure we'll catch up again someday yeah it was so nice talking to you i I love our chats and i hope we can do it again okay well i i also i also want to let you know that i loved your um the chat you had with David Berman, it was so... I listened to it when I was going, driving actually from New York to Hamilton. Oh. And it was right after he had passed away. And I just like, I, it was just so sweet. And I loved it. I just wanted oh. to let you know. That's that, very, very kind of you to uh, to say thank you. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. And I appreciate that. Uh, it was just such a great conversation. And it really was, it was really touching. And yeah, I just wanted to let you know. Oh, thanks, you Jesse. I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate that. Now, <laughs> that was be- so great. Before we go here, uh, I wonder if you can pick a song from all the time that we can go out on. And it could be anything you want, I think. Yeah, if if you could go out on the song Badly. Badly? Okay, and wh- Badly, why did yeah. you choose that song? It it's my favorite song on the record and I don't it's not it's not going to be one of the singles, but um I kind of wish that it was. <laughs> 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 For whatever reason it's not and um yeah, I really love that song and uh yeah. Okay, that's good enough yeah. for me, and, and uh, yeah. I think people will like it as well. I'm a fan. This is Badly by Jesse Lanza. Uh, Jesse, again, thank you so much for this time, and talk soon, and best of luck uh, with everything in uh, the future. Yeah, thank you so much, Vish. Good luck in uh, Edmonton. <laughs> Thank you.
Special thanks to Jesse Lanza for returning to Creative Control. This was, in fact, the 554th episode of Creative Control, for those of you keeping score at home. I know I am. Creative Control is part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and is available on all Apple and Google platforms and other things as well. If you can't find an episode that you've heard about from your friends and you're looking for it, uh, and, and you know, or, 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 you know, or else if you just want to learn more about me, like, who's this Vish guy? Who is he? And or if you want to, you know, and or, and or, that's a thing you say in real life. And or if you want to sign up for my regularly scheduled newsletter. All of this stuff you can do and experience by going to my website, vishkana.com. You can also like Creative Control on Facebook. Follow the show on Twitter at vishcreative or follow me directly at vishkana. Also, please visit patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to keep this podcast going and to keep me going. Frankly, these donations of yours, I know they may not seem, uh, you know, like a big deal, but they really do keep me going and they keep the show going. So if you'd like to contribute to the show, go to patreon.com slash creative control. And if you, if you want to check out the $6 or more tier, which gets you access to exclusive audio content for my own uh, audio archives, journey with me through my past as a you know, aspiring music journalist and and broadcaster as I interview some of my favorite people, you know, and it's it's fun. I've got it all saved and I'm I'm sharing it again, resharing it. Patreon.com slash creative control. Thanks again to live and massyhall.com where you can watch beautifully captured concerts by great Canadian artists. Also for their in-kind support, Pizza Trocadero, the bookshelf and planted bean coffee in Guelph and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton, Ontario. You won't get a donut like Granddad's Donuts in no Silicon Valley, let me tell you that. Thanks also to Jim Guthrie for letting me use uh, some music of his on the show. You can learn more about Jim at jimguthrie.org. And finally, thank you very much for listening this far into this Jesse Lanza episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that if you're new to the show, you consider subscribing to it or going through the back catalog of episodes and exploring and... uh, If you're a loyal and faithful follower of the show, thank you so much uh, for that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep making shows as long as is humanly possible. And I'll be back soon. I will talk to you soon. I hope you're well. Bye for now.